Good evening, everyone. Hope we had a nice day. My day was stressful, but I don't know about every other person. But we we'll thank God and let's just say a word of prayer. I know we've prayed, but prayer is not too much. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the grace to be gathered together. We thank you for your love us. We pray, Lord, as we come, we've come to learn at your feet, that you teach us and let us see revelation, let us have testimony, let us have an understanding of that which you want us to know. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we've prayed. Amen. Amen. So, um, we all know the topic. It says the power of patience. And I guess I'll just like talk as the spirits lead. It doesn't really have to be my experience, but every other single thing that I've come across. Um, I think I'll define patience as waiting for God without complaining or murmuring. Believing that, oh, they said I should introduce myself. I'm so sorry. Um, Bessie, I'm a master's student at University of North Carolina, Winsboro. I'm studying informatics and analytics. I go to church, Keeper Life Bible Church. Uh, Sister Shala, many other things. I think that should be it. Okay. Um, so as I was saying, patience is believing that God would actually fulfill his promise. Even when it seems as if everything is now working together. So maybe I should start from my recent experience. Around last year, I started applying for internship. Like we all know, it's almost summer and doing internship in US is more of like a better chance of you getting a job in the future. So I started applying for every internship I saw. Like at some point, I didn't even know where I was applying. I have like lots of application sites. Once I go online and I see this one, I register, I see this one, I register and every other thing. Then all the rejection in started coming in. I'm sure most of us know what, how it feels like. And everything that came in was just rejection, rejection, rejection. And in my mind, I'm like, hmm, maybe I'm not satisfied enough. Maybe I don't know what to do. Maybe I don't have the requirements, the complete requirement for the job. But after some weeks, or uh, yeah, maybe after like a month. This company just messaged me and was like, okay, I should come in for the interview. Then I was looking for the company, like I can't even remember that I applied. The job description was no more there. There was nothing there again. The only thing I had was come for the interview. And I was like, okay. I did interview. The funny thing was on the morning of the, of the interview, I slept off. The wow. interview was at the 8 a.m. And I actually chose 8 a.m. because I was like, I'm just going to prepare overnight and just do the interview and go back to sleep. So I slept around five, six, just brushing up on some skills. Ooh. Then I woke up and it was Ooh. nine. So I jumped up from my bread and I was like, God, you won't disappoint me today. <laughs> so I messaged the interview and I was like, I didn't say I slept off. I said something came up. Obviously, the food that came up. Wisdom, wisdom is profitable to die. To use wisdom. I was like, something came up. That's not lying. She was like, mm, it's okay, it's okay. 
And I even thought it was a video interview. It was not. I just stood up and went to get ready. And she started it's asking lied. questions. Nothing came up. <laughs> it's <laughs> lied. Sleep came up. <laughs> so she started asking questions. And let's just say God is faithful. I wouldn't say it went for a long period, but I got the job. Oh. And I told them that I'm resuming a particular day. Only for me to my school, and my school said, I can't resume. It's not possible. And I'm like, um, they just gave a lot of reasons just to not do the work. And so it was like a first day, and they said, I can't resume. I think if it was a normal me, I would just like message the company and tell them that my school is not allowing it. But for some reason, I didn't message them back. I just sat down there. And you know, um, the people you work with most times, you shouldn't walk the journey of life alone. You should always have people hold us to me to cry and people to tell things. And I just told someone that I got this internship after so many things and the school is like, I can't, I can't do it. They just gave a lot of reasons for not doing it. And the person was like, okay, just trust God. I'm like, okay, I trust God. I still didn't tell the company what the school said. Sorry for that. I still didn't tell the company what the school said. I was just there. I was just trusting God, waiting for the right time to talk, waiting for what I would say that would not come off as me lying to them that I can resume, then I couldn't resume. So it was a Sunday night. I, I was just like, okay, let me just tell the school, the company, what the school said. <sighs> That was on Thursday. The school told me on Thursday, but I didn't tell the company. I was just like, I'll be patient enough to see what God will say, to see when God will give me the go ahead to say it. And I told the company that, okay, the school says I can't resume this time. I have to resume this time. I've prepared my mind that I'm losing the internship. In fact, between that Thursday and Sunday, I've applied for so many other internships. But the company said, it's fine. You can resume whatever time the school says. And I'm like, it's a Sunday night. Everybody, it, she didn't even contact the human resources. She did not contact our bosses. She just said, it's fine. I will tell them in the morning and you can just come back. You know, one thing in life is that we shouldn't be too fast to, to make decisions. Don't be too fast to say, um, it's not going to work. You know, when Joseph was at, in the prison, when his brother sold him, for every step that he went through, when Potiphar's wife came, he said, will I do this thing and sin against God? Even through all his tribulation, he still believed there was a God. He never said anything wrong. So through that 13 years of the dream and the dream coming to pass, he believed God. So most times it's like, it's not happening. Will it happen? But we trust that it will happen because God promises that it will, it will. He said, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. As he says it and he will not do it. As he promised and it will not come to pass. I think most times you want to get to the resurrection without the crucifixion. We don't want to take it step by step. We don't want to take it precept upon precept. We don't want to take it line upon line. We want to see the glory without seeing the pain behind. So at the point where they are beating Jesus and he says, I am tired. The resurrection would not have come. I will not be here together. You know, a song says, Treasure of my heart and of my soul. In my weakness, you are merciful. 
Redeemer of my past and present wrong. Order of my future days to come. So it's not about the past. He has redeemed us. We are back to him, we are his children. So my, my, my rest, you know, my parents will always say, I'm not bothered about anything. And the truth is, even if you tell me that there's a storm going on, I'm just here. Because I believe that God loves his own. And the last time I checked, I'm a daughter of Zion. I don't know about you. I belong to God's food. So I've seen God over and over and over again. You know, when I went for my visa interview, before I even got to the airport, before I got to the embassy, I forgot some important documents at home. My, my interview in the morning was very early in the morning. I went with my friend, we got there and they told me I can't even come here. I can't even come here the embassy. And I was there. I was not crying, but at least I was worried. I was like, well, this is it. This is the end. I'll still be in this country at the end of the day. And for hours, for hours I was there. These people won't let me go. And at a point, someone sent what I needed to me. And I went in. My interview period has passed. But luckily for me, there are always a lot of people there. So they let me in. And I'll get it there. <laughs> If you see the rate actually they reject people. In fact, I was looking at myself over and over and over again, and I was like, really up. Number one, I'm late for the interview. Number two, I'm already stressed. Like you can see it all over my over my face that you know, when you look good going for an interview, and you get there, some things come up, everything is just like down. You just don't know what to do. Every question I re asked over the night was gone. Everything, I was just destabilized. But as everybody was going, I was just there yeah, speaking in tongues. I didn't even know what to do. I was like, whatever will happen today will happen. Then you see orators talking to those consulars. Like the way they say their story, they, they asked them one question. They did like two pages of the book. They've climbed everything. And I'm like, I don't even know what I will say today. And I got to this man and he said, which school are you going? I said, I'm going to this school. He said, oh, I know that school. I said, that's perfect. <laughs> he said, what's the name of your, what's your course about? I said, this is my course. And he was like, well, it's a STEM course and all that. What did he ask again? He asked like three or four questions. Ask for the Fine. And he gave me the visa. When I tell everybody, they are like, how did you do it? They didn't ask you too much questions. I said, the consular didn't ask me much questions. You know, what seems so hard to you? The scripture says, as the heaven is far from the heart, so is my thoughts far from your thoughts. It's not the same. So when you think and you sit there, and you think that job is not going to come, and you think they're not going to give you that. Sister Shalom, please tell me time so that I know when to stop. And you think that 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 thing is not coming to pass. That, I mean, that what he has promised is not showing. This is the rest that we have. That God is good. We patiently mature. Like we grow. We grow. If Joseph has run back when he was at Egypt, seeing everything that is happening, his family, the whole of his lineage would have starved to death during that famine. So sometimes what we go through is for you to be a shoulder for another person. So you don't want to, you don't want to skip the process. You don't want to think that this is too hard for me. You want to believe God that there is no temptation that has come that you can't overcome. So in whatever it is, in whatever it seems like it's, it is like, either whatever, in whatever area of our lives, we believe that God is good. It says, we will wait upon the Lord 
we will wait upon the Lord. That's just it. We will wait for him to, to show us his goodness. We will wait for him to bring us to that promised land. Just like what we are doing this month, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the thoughts I have towards you, the thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you to an expectant end, a hope and a future. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Well, that was a wonderful one. Thank you, host, for unmuting me. <laughs> well, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Before, before I say anything, I am sorry. I want to apologize. I did not tell all of, I did not tell us about the quest, um, the link to ask questions. So this is a practical, practical topic. If you have any question, there's a link in the, the discussion in the, in the chat box. Please click on that link and ask your very, you know, like, you know, that kind of question. This is in, in Burakwame's voice. <laughs> the very sensitive questions. Please um, click on that link and ask it. Any question, this is a very practical topic. We're here to answer you. Um, success is here, Pastor Ben, guys, yeah. So if there was something I took out of this discussion, it is the faithfulness of God, that when God says that he would do it, he will do it. A lot of times we think, okay, we, 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 from what she, uh, that our, sisters talked of, our sister talked about, a lot of times we think it's by our own power that we do it, but it's not. God wants to take the glory. Imagine the time she woke up for an interview in America and she got the job. It was just God's faithfulness and God has shown himself. So... In fact, that was a wonderful one, sis. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to go to our next panelist. There's so much to learn today. Please put down your questions. The, que the link is in the chat box. Put down your questions, and we'll have time for it. Amen. So our next panelist is our daddy, um, one, um, our state overseer from Georgia. In fact, I'd like for you, daddy, to introduce yourself to everybody. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Um, good evening, everyone. Happy to be with the um, young adults uh, tonight. And um, I, I want to say Happy New Year. Uh, it's going to be a great year for all of us in Jesus' name. Uh, it will be the very best year yet for every one of us. Uh, as our sister said, um, Pastor Binga, I, um, by God's grace, help to lead uh, churches here in Georgia um, to uh, to be able to fulfill God's plan and agenda for his church here in the state of Georgia. And um, uh, that's on the spiritual side. Uh, I also work and uh, the Lord has been faithful. Um, as we think about patience and the power of patience, uh, we thank the Lord for what our sister said, Sister Tessie. Um, our patience is very important. Um, we live in a world where everything is, uh, where people want everything fast. Uh, people live on the fast lane. People want the fast food. And people want things to move very, very quickly. But God is not like that. In fact, uh, God is a holy God. God is a faith God. God is also a patient God. It's because of his patience. Um, that's why um, we eventually came to know him as our Lord, uh, know Christ as our Lord and Savior. If God were not patient, uh, the world would have been destroyed. As, uh, as we think about the power of patience, um, it's, it's important to know that there are some synonyms for patience that can help clarify the word. Um, of course, endurance is a synonym. Uh, perseverance is a synonym. Uh, steadfastness will be a synonym. Uh, waiting on the Lord will be a synonym. And uh, what I wanna do is just tell you five M's that uh, indicate the power of patience. Uh, the first one is maturity. Uh, patience will bring maturity. Um, 
the the Bible makes it very clear, you know, in the parable of the sower, uh, the Bible talks about the seed that fell on the good ground uh, by patience brought forth fruit. And uh, because of the patience, it brought, brought forth fruit. Think about a, a farmer. If you plant orange seeds, for example, it takes some time for the for the the tree to grow and for oranges uh, to show forth on the tree, and there is that process that is important. Um, and many people want to skip the process and get the fruit, but in reality, it doesn't work like that. Um, patience brings maturity. Uh, in Romans chapter five, verse three, and in verse four, it says. And uh, it talks about the experience that patients bring. Uh, why don't we quickly look at that? Romans chapter five and in verse three. Um, Romans chapter five and in verse three. Uh, why don't we go to yeah chapter three, chapter five, verse three. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation walk at patience and patience ex experience. The word experience there can be rendered maturity. Um, patience will help us to become more matured. Uh, and uh, growth is the only guarantee that the future is gonna be better than the present. Uh, and patience help to ensure that that happens. So that's the very first M. The second M I wanna highlight is that patience will help to uh, bring mastery. You really can never uh, master anything if you're not patient. I mean, think about uh, Nobel laureates. Uh, they just didn't wake up and become Nobel laureates in just um, two days. It's, it's as a result of investment. They invested their time um, into a particular field of research or into a particular field over time. Um, for years, many times. Uh, and if you're gonna really master anything, patience is important. Patience is key. Um, the Bible says, let us run with patience. Let us run with patience. If you think about um, someone who is running, whether it's the, um, the cross country run or the um, just running the relay race, uh, if you're going to really uh, master that, then uh, we need patience. Patience is key. And uh, the Bible also talks about in uh, patience, you possess your soul. When there are challenges in life, when there are difficulties in life, if you're going to really possess your soul, then uh, patience is important so that you're not perturbed, you're not disturbed, you're not moved by every challenge that comes your way. Um, if you, um, let's look at Luke chapter 21, I just highlight this, and then um, look at verse 19, Luke 21 verse 19. Uh, it's pretty clear that patience bring uh, maturity. Luke 21, Luke 21, 19, your patience possess ye your souls. So uh, we must learn patience and allow patience to have its, its way. Um, it helps us to master fields. You know, there are people that uh, they're doing a particular field, maybe a major, and all of a sudden they have not even spent enough time and they just quit. There are others that maybe they're, in, um, they're taking a particular class and as they're taking the class, they, they, the professor shows up and he says, well, uh, this class is gonna be very tough and uh, that scares them right away. And they almost wanna drop that class just the very first, the first day of the class. Um, so patience brings maturity, patience brings mastery. Uh, not only that, patience also uh, helps us to have a ministry. You really cannot have a viable ministry if you have not learned patience. Uh, a ministry comes as a result of patience. You know, the Bible talks about, you have heard of the patience of Job and the end of the Lord. Uh, the patience of Job is a ministry now to us. We're learning from Job. Uh, 
And uh, if people are going to really learn from you, it will be because uh, you've demonstrated patience. Um, many accidents happen in life because people are not patient. Uh, professional accidents, marital accidents, financial accidents, different accidents happen because people are not patient. If you, um, if you will allow the cultivation of patience in your life, uh, you're going to not only become matured, you're not going to only have mastery, but you're going to have a ministry. You're going to be a blessing to many. If you think about, for example, our Father in the Lord, our GS, uh, or even you pick our, our, our region over, say, our Father in the Lord for the region, you'll see the importance of patience. Nothing great happens just uh, by chance. And the, the, the patience and the perseverance and the dedication of our GS, for example, continues to bring others into the kingdom. And so when you become patient, you have a ministry. Um, the other thing I want to highlight is uh, uh, the fact that patience has the power to bring miracles. Um, in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, and as you think about Hebrews chapter 6 and in verse 11, Hebrews chapter 6, verse 11, it says, And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end, that ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now, um, as you think about verse 12 in particular, you see that um, there are two Two, two things that I mentioned that will help us to inherit the promises. It, it coupled, the, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews by the spirit coupled them. And um, two things are highlighted here, faith and patience. Many times people don't know that um, when, you're truly, when you truly believe God, you also learn patience. The Bible says, he that believeth shall not make haste. And faith in God does not negate patience. I remember um, when I first joined my com the company I am in right now, um, the, um, I began working for a client and then within the client, um, I, was with, I was part of a team. Um, I, liked the, I loved the team, um, but then just a few, I think weeks, some weeks after I started, they moved me over to another team. Now, if you left for me, if I were to make the decision, I wouldn't leave. <laughs> but they didn't even consult me. They just said, um, you've got to go to this other team. Okay, so I went. Um, I didn't complain. I've learned to just be patient by God's grace. Now, as I got to that team, um, then they said, uh, well, we're trying to see the, the best area for you. And then they moved me to yet another team. Now, I didn't know that God was setting me up for some great things. Um, it turned out that the team that I was moved to last was actually God's opportunity to get me to greater heights. Um, initially, uh, so I joined uh, because I always know that all things work together for good to those that love God who are the called according to his promise. And every child of God is to be envied, not pitied. If you're a child of God, you're never to be pitied, you're to be envied. Uh, who will pity the child, the daughter, or the son of a president? And God is our father. And so um, as, uh, the Lord really helped me uh, with the other team and uh, things moved very quickly. Uh, favors began to come, promotions began to come exaltations began to come, amazing, amazing things happened. And it was just because of the patience. Miracles come when we're patient. So I covered maturity. Patience has the power to produce maturity, growth. It's got the power to produce mastery. It's got the power to produce ministry. Um, it's got the power for miracles. And finally, uh, patience brings more. M-O-R-E, it brings more, much more than what I've highlighted. 
Um, in Ephesians chapter 30, verse 20, the Bible says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. The power that works in us is the power of patience. And when we allow patience to have its perfect way, what you will discover is that God always has more, more in store for you. Um, if I were to interview Joseph and say, Joseph, um, can I have a, uh, just a few minutes to talk to you? And he says, yes, please go ahead. I say, Joseph, did you know that you were going to go to become prime minister in Egypt? They will say, no. If I knew, I would have just told them, sell me to Egypt. I said, no, I, I didn't know that. OK. Now, you got into Potiphar's house. And then as you got into Potiphar's house, eventually you, uh, Potiphar's wife told a lie against you. And you were still very patient. Why were you patient, Joseph? Oh. Joseph will say the, the steps of the, of the good man, of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. And then from Potiphar's house to the prison, you go to the prison. Um, why were you not troubled, Joseph? Um, why didn't you call for so many prayer houses to begin to pray for you? Because then some people might think that you need deliverance. I mean, how can you, just you, uh, sold by your brothers? And then you got into Potiphar's house, things were going good. All of a sudden, some things went wrong. Don't you think you need deliverance? Joseph will say, relax, God is with me. And then um, Joseph um, eventually became the prime minister. If I asked Joseph, did you know you were going to become prime minister? Joseph will say, I knew I had a dream of significance, but I never knew it was going to be this great because there's always more with patience. And as you keep patience at the center of your life in every area and allow that to build patience, you'll be matured, you have mastery, you have ministry, you have miracles, and there'll be much more. Thank you. Over to you, Sister Shalom. Thank you again, media team. <laughs> You know what, let's, let's, let's take out this time to, to soak in what we've heard. I'm just gonna give us like five seconds just to, to digest what we've heard. <sighs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. In fact, we're so grateful for, for you taking out this time to speak to us. In fact, there's so much we've learned in just this fifth, minutes or less it's even less than 15 minutes so much information so much knowledge thank you so much sir thank you and thank you for your experience as you know I always get out a few things I always take a few things out of it so you talked about a lot of things but I'm going to talk about the two or three that I got so one patients bring mastery Hmm. Like in this world where things are just going fast, especially young people, we just want it fast, fast, fast. You know, we thank God for this message that, that, that is reminding us of the fact that if we want to get mastery of whatever we want to do, we need patience. And in this generation where they want things, they want more things, they want it fast, patience also brings more. Hmm. And then also one more thing that I got from this message is that in the process in fact, that we, we should trust God in the process, in the process. And so I like the, the interview you had with, with Joseph. <laughs> that was a very interesting interview. Thank you so much for sharing it. Thank you so much, sir. Um, so we're going to questions. In fact, it's going so quickly. We have a lot of times for questions. So if you have your questions, if you've not asked your questions yet, what are you waiting for? And in this house, right, we are a family. There is no question that is too small, that is maybe useless. If there's something that came to your mind that you've been wondering about, you've been bothering about, this is the time to talk about it, to ask the question so God can give you clarification through his servants. And the Lord will speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to go on to our first questions. For those who have started um, sending your questions, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so the first question um, 
it goes to the panelists. If this is a test, you'll pass the finger could go first. So the person is asking, how can we wait on God without getting discouraged? How can, how can we wait on God without getting discouraged in the way? Um, who is going first, please? <laughs> Where's our, where our panelist? <laughs> Sister, um, Sister Tessie, you can go first, then our dad is going to, you know, talk after you. Okay. So the question says, how can we wait on God with, wait without being discouraged? Okay. So... I believe the waiting period is not just for you to wait without doing something. There are things for you to do. The book of Romans 12, 12, it says, instantly continue in prayer. Rejoice in hope. It's not just you waiting. It's not just you waiting. It's you believing God to do something. I think it is um, 40 verse one. Yes, it says, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He inclined. So David waited. He wasn't just waiting. He kept on telling God over and over and over again. Even though it seems as if the answer was not coming, but he kept on saying it. This is it. This is it. I believe you can do this. So during your waiting period, you should continue to tell God. I know sometimes it might be hard. You know, it might feel as if it's not coming. Sometimes when I want something or I believe that this thing is supposed to happen and it's not happen happening, I go to the place of prayer and you don't even know what to say. Sometimes I just, I just play Christian music. Sometimes I just listen to someone, you know, something just to uplift your spirit. Sometimes I just talk to friends, you know, people that are spiritually inclined. Then we should be very careful of something while waiting. The book of 2 Corinthians 10, 12, it says, do not compare yourself to others. Do not, like, it's not going to do you any good. It says, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves but they, they're measuring themselves by themselves. So you think, oh, this person has gone fast. I must be there. It is better to be naturally stable and slow than for you to be very fast and crash without remedy. So you, you want to stay, you want to wait on God. And as, as you're waiting, you're believing God, your hope is being built, your faith is being built. And you are trusting God that, is just face faithful to to fill his promise. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, sis. Thank you. Okay, Daddy, do you have anything to add to that, sir? Um, just a few more uh, points to what uh, Sister Tessie said. Um, it's always helpful to keep in mind the the goal. Um, when you know that. God will never fail. And um, whatever he has promised you is able to bring to pass. And keeping that goal in view helps to ensure that you keep going. You know, it's like the um, a story I had of someone that um, had a dream of significance. And it was going to actually become like the next king or prince. And, uh, but the people around knew that there was only one way to disqualify this individual. If you got him to do something that is uh, um, wrong, then, uh, then this individual will, that will disqualify him from becoming a prince. So they did everything just to get him, but they couldn't. And so they were surprised. And so they came, how come all that we tried wouldn't get you? And said, well, I kept the goal in focus. And when you keep the goal in focus, that helps you to stay focused and motivated. 
The other thing I was going to say is also to remember the past goodness of the Lord. When you remember what God has done for you in the past, I've always been faithful to you before. That uh, energizes you. That brings energy, fresh fire within. And it helps to keep you going because he that was faithful in the past is faithful and is faithful now and will be faithful in the future. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. Keep the focus. <laughs> Keep focus. In fact, what am I saying? Um, okay. So we're going to go. Um, first of all, before we go to the next question, I'm going to say this. It looks like we all, maybe some of us didn't get the link or we came after the link was shared. Um, I'd like the media team to please share the link again for questions. So if you have any more questions, please post it on the link. God bless you. Thank you so much, son. Thank you, Sister Tessie. We're going to the next question. So this question affects even me, okay? <laughs> uh, it says, how do you discern between waiting patiently and not moving due to fear? And the person said, e.g., children of Israel, at the children of Israel at the sea with the Egyptians coming and God and God coming to Moses and saying, what are you waiting for? And give the instructions to progress. So they didn't progress because of fear. So he, um, the person is asking, is there a way to discern, to discern between fear and working in patience? Anyone that will go first, please. Sister Tessie, if you have something to say. <laughs> I think Pastor Benga should go first. <laughs> okay, sir. Please, sir. Please, sir. Okay. Um, great question. Great question. As you think about the story of the children of Israel, you know, the Lord told them to, to go. Um, Moses was praying. And then, but then God said, Moses, you've done enough praying. It's the time to go. Um, the way to discern is to make sure that we hear from God. When God says go, then we become unstoppable. But until he says go, we wait. Um, so the, the clarity of God's voice is important. Uh, once you are clear that God says go, then we should just, regardless of what we see, regardless of what we hear, just go. Um, it reminds me, some years back, I was um, somewhere and I needed something important. Um, so I went over here. The person didn't have it. I went over there. The, the other person didn't have it. And then the Lord spoke to my heart and says, go talk to that person. This person have what, has what you need. And so the person didn't look like someone who had what I needed, but because God said it, uh, regardless of how I felt, I just went and I got it. The point is that the, we, we've got to learn to be sensitive to the voice of the Lord. And when you're sensitive to God's voice, even when there is fear within your heart, uh, choose to ignore the fear because God has spoken. Uh, until he speaks, you wait. But then when, you, when he has spoken, then you become bold as a lion because when God speaks, he clears the way for your passage. Thank you so much, sir. Does Sister Tessie have something to add? Oh, that's good. We'll go to the next question. We can go to the next question. Okay. Thank you, sir. So I hope the You're person welcome. who had the question got the answers to the question. And every other person who, have, who has had um, um, such a question but did not mention it. I hope we got our answers. Um, we're going to go to the next question. So um, the, this next question is still, it's still, I think it's still in the same line. But if I ask the question and it's, it's not like the, the question we just um, answered, um, please let me know. So the person is asking, how do we differentiate, with, um, differentiate patience from delay? Is it the same question or I'm just the one mixing things up? Patience from delay and differentiate between patience and, and fear. In fact, it's not the same thing. How can we differentiate between patience and delay? <laughs> um, 
Shall I go first? Sister Tessie, <laughs> go, go, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I think one important thing is knowing how God, how God speaks to you and what he wants you to do part time. So that it won't be as if he's not giving you, it's not because he's not giving you a go ahead, you think it is a delay. Because he's not saying, don't do this. So you think that he's not yet, he's not listening to you, he's not acting to you. So, you know, when Jesus resurrected, and he told the disciples, he said, stay in the upper room. Don't go anywhere. Wait till you, are, till you get the power. You know, in their mind, they will be like, it's time to go into ministry. Let's just show them that, that we were with Jesus, as in he, he poured everything on us. In their mind, they will be thinking, it's, it's not, it's a delay. He doesn't want them to do it yet. But see how they came out from there, refined as gold. So it's just a matter of discernment. That doesn't mean that there is no delay. Sometimes there can be delay. But this is our rest. That you can go back to, to our father and ask, am I doing the right thing? You can ask him again. You can ask him questions. And when, you know, one thing I've learned in the place of prayer these days is that things that I struggle to do myself, where my weakness is, I get strength from God. So it became very easy for me to get things. So I don't struggle no more. I don't wait no more. So when it looks as if God is saying, you are going to get this job. Then you did the interview and you did not get it. Or God is saying, I am going to fulfill this thing at this time. We have to be careful. When you are saying delay, is it according to man's time or according to God's time? Because God's time is infinity. So don't say, you, you, you can't say because it is not happening according to your own time. That means that God is not faithful. But you should trust God. Now, when it comes to being like a delay and the devil wants to bring that, that fear in your heart. Maybe it's time to talk to someone just to get that courage. Or maybe it's time to go back to the scriptures and, you know, just get that promises again and that assurance. Amen. Thank you, Rotem. And Sister Tessie. Pastor, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sis. <laughs> um, okay. Pastor, do you have something to add to that, sir? Um, I think it's it's fine. Our sister Tessie has uh, covered it. Thank you so much. Okay, we're going to go to the next question. And as short time as possible, that we can use to answer the question, it'll be perfect. Um, so the next question is this. How do we build patience? Then the person continues to say from a very impatient life to a, to a patient one. What do we need for such transition? Like you've been very impatient. How do you build yourself from a very impatient person to a person full of patience? <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's um, character development. Um, we have our part there. So um, the first thing to keep in mind is that um, Salvation, the salvation experience helps to bring um, the impartation of Christian graces into our lives. So, um, for example, when you get born again, then the fruit of the spirit begins to manifest. And one of them is patience. But then, even after you are born again, the Lord expects us to build more patience. Many believers don't realize this as we have in Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Um, and I want you to notice something from God's word in Second Peter chapter one, um, verse six, 
because of our time. He says, um, let me read from verse five. And beside this, given all diligence, Add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge temperance and to temperance patience. That is add, meaning you have something to do. So say somebody wants to build patience. You look at the areas where you're normally easily tempted to be impatient. And then you watch those areas and um, you make sure you deliberately, that's why it says hard, there's a part you've got to do. Of course, you pray and ask the Lord to help you by spirit, but then in practical ways, then you will say, somebody who takes decision very quickly and then goes back and regrets those decision. So you'll say, uh, if you've been taking decision in just at the snap of a finger, you say, I wait five more minutes, 10 more minutes one more hour. And that deliberate decision will then help to reinforce the prayer part to make sure that you are able to then build patience in your life. So um, that's, that's, that will help. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. No, to add to that, there's one, one word that I like very much it, um, the word is be very intentional with your actions. So it's like, no, it just came to my mind as you said that, like you taking the deliberate action to do something. Um, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And we're going to practice patience. We're going to be people um, filled with patience in Jesus' name. Amen. So um, the next question, how do we keep up with the rat, the rat race? <laughs> and not miss out on the big picture and yet still catch up with the progress trail, balancing faith with patience. So how do we keep up with the rat race and not miss out on the big picture? I'm sorry, I don't know what that means. <laughs> and yet still catch up with the progress trail, balancing faith with patience. If you understand, please I'd like for you to answer. <laughs> So I think I was reading something and the person said, um, let's look at a car as an analogy. It says, faith is the engine. Patience is the fuel that drives it. It's, it's actually comes together. You know, if God says, I am going to become a minister of God. Oh, okay. So... Pastor Nathaniel Basti was talking of this particular experience. So everybody knows that now he travels all over the world and minister in song. He said just recently, like three, four years ago, that they went to this country and getting there, maybe most of us watched the program. Um, the organizers that called them said there was no money and all that. So they ministered him and his crew. On getting back to the hotel, they were about to lodge out. And the hotel said they are going nowhere because they've not been paid. Their hotel bills have not been paid. And they said, so they held them ransom there. Someone came in, stood as a short C and let them go. On getting to the airport, they said they didn't have a flight back. Like, 10, 11 crew, he said with his wife and his children. From his pocket, he paid for the money and they came back to Nigeria with his money. Now, through that process, he would think that God has already told him that he's going to be a worldwide minister. And several things like that that happened to him that we don't even know about, but still yet, he had the big picture in mind. And the big picture is whatever God has says, he will do it. So today we see, him, we see him everywhere. I don't mean everywhere, like we see him in his stream. But you don't know the process he took. You know, James 1, 4, I was reading the message version and it says, so don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work. So you become mature and well-developed. If it says you're going to become a kingdom financier, it might look as if 
you don't look like it now, but we don't look like where we've been. Someone told me today, he said, let's see, if I send you your pictures of NCCF days, I would never have thought, have thought that you would come out like this. And I said, we praise God because it's not like where we are. The truth is, as far as you are moving, as far as you're not stagnant, and you have the big picture in mind, then it's going to come to pass. I think all we just have to do is be not, believe in the faithfulness of God, that whatever promise he has made is surely going to do it for us. Mm -hmm. That's the Okay. Um, just to uh, add a few more details, um, the aspect of life, there are many paradoxes you find in life, one of which is uh, where the word of God says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. How can somebody wait, waiting walk and run at the same time? Um, as we think about the rat race, and for us as children of God, God wants us to be the head and not the tail. We've got to keep that in mind that we belong to the top. And as we keep that in mind, we keep our commitment to the Lord. That's very important. What got Daniel to the top in Babylon? His commitment to God and his pursuit of excellence. We must make sure that is that balance. He had an excellent spirit. Uh, but he also connected with God. It's the connection with God that actually set him up to the top, to, the, to be to get to the top. Uh, and so um, others may be running the rat race. For us, we will keep our fellowship with God, and we will pursue excellence. And where we will go beyond the others, because. Daniel and his friends, we were 10 times better. And that's the promise of God for us. You will not miss anything knowing Christ. All that you need, he will not only supply, he will abundantly supply. You will be at the top and you will stay at the top because it says you will be above only and not beneath. Thank you so much, sir. Amen, oh, amen. <laughs> Um, so we're going to go to the next question. So we have um, like quite a number of questions. So we'd like for us to, you know, use um, 15 minutes to answer like say seven questions, if that is possible. So two, two minutes for each. Okay. How do we know if we are being patient for something that isn't God's will? So if I think I'm, I understand what this person is saying, like you're being patient, like you're wasting, I, I can say you're wasting patience. Like it's not in the will of God, but you're patiently waiting for it. So how can you know if you're being patient, but it's not in the will of God? Sister Tessie, you want to take a stab at that? Mm. How do you know it's not the will of God? <laughs> How do you, yeah, that the thing you're being so patient for, it's not in God's will. I don't know, but I'll let Pastor Moto should speak, but I believe that um, as we grow, as we grow, we discern what God wants and what God doesn't. Like, you'll be, you will know in your heart that it's not God's will. But sometimes you want to be stubborn and strong in it. <laughs> you just want to do it. Like sometimes you just know. You just you just know. So I think at that point where that um, doubt starts creeping in, you want to go back and confirm if it is God's will or not. Because the Lord speaks to our hearts. And if your heart is telling you that it is not, through the spirit of God, then you want to confirm from God if it is or not. So just like Sister Shalom says, so that you won't waste the patience. I don't know about that one. If you waste the patience, it is well. <laughs> so, 
Um, over to sir. Sir? Yeah, you. Okay. I'm sorry, sir. No, I was going to say uh, you're yeah, spot on. Um, the, it's pretty clear as many as are led by the spirit of God are the sons, are the children of God. Mm -hmm. um, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we're sons of God. And when the spirit bears witness with our spirit, um, especially for salvation, which is the greatest miracle that could happen, the spirit continues to bear witness in other areas of our lives. Um, it's important to know that God's word is number one and the spirit of God will never contradict scriptures. Mm -hmm. So uh, if it's contrary to the will of God, then trash it, don't waste time on that. If God does not approve of it, don't you can't change God's mind. It's crystal clear in scriptures. Now, but for areas that are not crystal clear, um, then of course your waiting on the Lord is not a waste of time. You just want to discern whether this is the direction I should go or not. And when God sees that the heart is clear, it's not stubborn, it's not being rebellious, it's not having a, an idol, it's not, once we remove all those things, then God is a father. The Bible says is the father of spirits, the father of mercies. And Jesus, our Lord said, if you've been evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. How much more, how much more readily willingly, lovingly, shall your father, your heavenly father, your own daddy who is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him. So God is not as difficult as we think. And hearing from God is not as difficult as we think if our heart is right with God. Thank you, sir. That answers it. <laughs> We're not gonna waste time on all those, you know, on all those um, other things that are not in the will of God. And the Lord will help us that when we hear it, we'll be able to know that this is the voice of God and we're not going to be lazy or be stubborn about it. Amen. 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 Um, so the next question says, what is the best practice of patience when there's a lot of tribulations? The best practice of patience when there's a lot of tribulations, two minutes. Pastor, do you Okay. Um, when there is uh, tribulation, there are challenges in life. Say, let's take a very simple, practical example. In the place of work, uh, your boss just becomes, you don't understand what happened. All of a sudden, things just turned on the, to the south. And difficulties around you here and there. And uh, your boss that used to um, like your work, all of a sudden things changed. Um, what do you do at that time? Are you, you suddenly got a new boss that is not favorable towards you, favorably disposed towards you. What do you do? Um, we, we trust in God. Faith and patience will always conquer. Um, and just uh, you pray. That's our powerful weapon. And then we make sure we keep uh, the mind that is clear. Uh, don't be envious, don't have animosity, don't hate anyone. You just live your life as a child of God and be patient, looking up to God to turn the situation around. And believe this, God is more than able to do it. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the quick response. So another thing to add, meditation, mm. what, God, what the world calls meditation is not it at all. So let's not be fooled. Um, so meditation is not, you know, what the pastor said, please let's practice it. God will bless us in Jesus' name. The next question, what's the line between faith and patience? Are they the same? Can one have faith and not patience and vice versa? I think we already answered, um, um, Sister Tessa said something like that. So, um, something in her answers. Sister Tessie. Okay. I think um, the analogy she was saying, um, I want to believe that your faith grows through patience. You know, another word for patience, as Pastor Gwenga said the other that time, endurance, long suffering. And Hebrews, he said, faith is the, thing, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And you, you grow your faith by by the things you've gone through. So what happens to you this year? That you are very annoyed. You are like, God, it can't be. We are closer than that. 
Then you go back to God and you get the reason. When that something like that happens next year, you take a different appro approach. Because through faith, through patience, you've learned something. You didn't skip mm. that process. So it's not, they are not, I wouldn't say they are two far distant things. And I wouldn't say they are the same. I would just say that one leads to another or they both work together. So without one, you might not be able to get the other. So patience, your patience grows to faith and the two are just together. It's not too distinct or so it's not an Anthony. It's more mm -hmm. two things that actually works together to make it a better person. Mm -hmm. Daddy, did you have something to say or we can go to the next question? Um, let's go to the next question. Let's go to okay. the next question. Is waiting easier when we are getting personal revelations from God periodically along the process? What do we do when God seems to be speaking too infrequently concerning what we are waiting for? So is it easier when God is speaking as we go on um, yeah, and when God is not speaking or when he speaks one and then he waits and then he speaks again. So what do we do at that point? Well, um, I can quickly take that. The, the Lord, uh, certainly when there is regular communication, it helps in a relationship. And when the Lord frequently, the Lord wants to talk to us very frequently. But we must remember that God is thinking big picture. It's not only thinking one side. Many times when we are under pressure about some things, that's the only thing we are concerned about. But God sees beyond that. And there are times he wants to get our attention on other areas. But our mind is, our mindset is just on one side. And because of that, we may not even hear what God is saying at that time. So it's always important to be open uh, to keep our relationship with God intact and to just allow fellowship with God and to also make sure that whatever God tells us, even in other areas that are not necessarily related, directly related to what we're looking up to God for, we obey those areas as well because disobedience in other areas can hinder God from speaking to us in, in the area that we want to focus on as well. Thank you, sir. Um, we're going to go to the next question. How do we not confuse our personal responsibility with being patient? One, how do you measure if you are being patient? Two, what is also, what is also, what is, what isn't patient? Like, what is not patient? Then he was saying, like, it's waiting to, to get the Holy Ghost by age 70 as a young person being patient, like, I think the person's trying to say, um, well, this is a part of the question, and this other part of the question, the person's trying to ask if, you know, waiting to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit when you're 70 is being patient. I guess that's what I, I'm getting. So is how do you confuse um, a personal responsibility with being patient? How do we measure, if we, um, measure uh, our being patient and um, is, so should we be waiting on God, you know? Let me try to read it real well. If you're being patient, what is also not patient? And the person was saying that is waiting to get the Holy Ghost by age 70 as a young person. Is it being patient or is it good? You know, at the age of 70, you're still waiting. Okay, um, Sister Tessie, you want to? Um, look. Number one question, how do you differentiate personal responsibility from patience? Is that what you mean? I don't. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's true. Okay. I think when you say, okay, it's more of like, I'm aspiring to become a data analyst, short term goal. And I know that there are some programming languages that are necessary. I know I'm not proficient in them. I am here praying unto God that Father, let this job just come, let this job just come. And you know, I'm not trying to be better in my skills. 
I'm not trying to put excellence in it. So when you're trusting God for something, I think you want to, um, along, during the period of waiting, you want to grow yourself. So if you say, I want to get married, with, I want to have my wedding next year now. And you know, there are some dishes that you can't cook. This one is not even about tribe. Some sim simple things that you can't do, you know, either a lady or a man, you want to, that is your responsibility. The Holy Spirit will not come and be teaching you how to make stew or cook jollof rice. You take it upon yourself to watch you to, to grow. If you want to aspire to become a programmer, those are your responsibilities. You just don't expect that, oh, prayer would make me good. No, you know, David was, at his father's house. He learned a lot of things before he became a king. So personal responsibility, I don't know if I'm answering the question, but I'm answering it to the best of my knowledge. Personal responsibility, your responsibility with patience, you have to add your own excellence to it. So whatever you are waiting for, make sure that you are maturing to that position. Like, you, um, I think Paul was telling the church that, I, I, you should have been eating meat by now, but I, it is only milk I can still feed you. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine an adult that cannot eat meat and we still have to be giving the person compliant or just liquid milk. So we mature. So our responsibility as a person is to mature, is to mature. Then about the Holy Ghost at 70 years, I believe the scripture says God gives the spirit. He said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all men. You don't have to wait for that time. You can always ask God if you want it now. If it's as if it's not coming, we have pastors amongst us. We have youth leaders. You can tell them to help you pray together with you. And, and you can't confuse when you say patience. You're praying. It's just like marrying an unbeliever. You believe you love this person. You are now patiently waiting for God to tell you. We know that it is not in the scripture. It is not together. Mm -hmm. You can't marry a non-believer. So that kind of patience is just because you can't change no mind. So there is no relationship with light or darkness. I don't know, but I'm actually answering to what I understand about the question. So that is my answer. I think I, I did answer one. I didn't hear more pastors being that time actually. Right, I think the you, you've answered well. The the I think the third question or the second one was uh, how do you measure patience? Um, you can measure patience is like how do you measure your growth? Um, there's a way when a little kid is born, they go to the hospital and they measure the height, they measure the weight, they they check everything. So you can measure patience. Um, it's important to know that God looks for patience and he sees patience. You know, our Lord Jesus was talking to the churches in, um, in Revelation. He says, I know your patience. Um, so the Lord can tell when there's patience. And you can tell too. So for example, if you, if you got unhappy so very quickly before, uh, now as you're maturing and you're growing, you'll discover that that doesn't happen anymore. If you take decisions just at, at the snap of a finger before now, you see you're not doing that anymore. There's some progress you're making. Celebrate the progress and trust God to even help you further. And then you'll discover that you are able to measure your progress. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Tessie. So um, due to time, we're going to answer, we're going to ask um, the last questions. And if we did not answer your question tonight, we do apologize. We hope that, in fact, um, Burkwami, when he comes up to talk, I'm sure he's going to say something about that. I hope he remembers to say something about the questions that were not answered. So I'm going to ask this question. We'll answer it in two minutes. So it says, how patient is patient enough? How do I know when I'm being patient or I'm being, I'm being behind God's schedule? I could be patient when God has moved. Anyway, um, anyway, out, anyway, out, please. And then the other one is, how do you differentiate between being patient and being complacent? And then he, um, he says, oh, she. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 11, verse 12, it says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. 
So how do you know if you, you know, have answered the question? So two minutes, please. Yeah, I think Pastor doing that. Huh? Thank you. The, um, when we think about patience, the target is, is Christ. Our goal is to be like Christ. And you measure yourself with Christ our Lord. Um, the Bible says we all with open face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. So you cannot actually exhaust patience. There's always more in Christ. Now, the other piece is that um, when we, patience is different from being complacent. Uh, when you're patient is you're basically looking up to the Lord, <clears throat> but in your patience, you're also developing yourself. Uh, like our sister says, Sister uh, Tessie said, uh, you get, you're planning to get married, but you're not saying that, well, I'm getting, to, I'm waiting to get married and you're not doing anything. You're not praying for the will of God, or you're not even developing yourself. Uh, you're trying to find to get a job of a program or a data analyst. Um, you're not building up yourself. The Bible says, we be, uh, ye beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So there is that, there is that separation. Uh, and we must make sure that we uh, differentiate between those. When a person is truly patient, is, is doing something. I mean, think about Joseph. Joseph was building skill in Potiphar's house. It was, it had the, that was the dream of the, of the top, but it was learning administration. It was learning how to interact with people, how to relate, with, relate well with people. No wonder it bubbled to the top. Nobody's gonna make Joseph the chief if he, if he didn't learn all those skills, relational skills. And then in the, in the prison, he was also building up his skill. Um, and no wonder he bubbled to the top. He was also made the top in the prison. So as you're waiting, you're building up yourself. You're developing yourself. You're developing your skills. There are things God has given you. Make sure you add value to others. Increase what God has given you because you are accountable to the Lord for all this. And as in the course of developing yourself, then opportunities will come because Joseph was developing his skill of interpretation of dreams. Then he saw the bottle and the baker and he said they were sad. And then um, he said, oh, they said, well, they had dreams that they didn't know the interpretation. And then he said, oh, tell me your dream. And then he interpreted to them and eventually the butler uh, was released. Now it was the same butler that remembered Joseph. You see, he used the skill. He was gonna to get to the top. He was not complacent. He built himself and it was in the building of himself that then became the solution to his uh, uh, to, to get into the top. Thank you, sir. I'm going to mention a few things that are written by maybe a pastor or like a brother. It says, man's view of patience is frustration. God's view of patience is the most valuable gift you require to work with him. And then um, another pastor says, you can also try to check occasionally, do you have peace while waiting? Worth passing time, passing, worth passing of time. Are you still convinced the word of God? You have to wait to check on the word of God, and also someone can, um, you know, can someone counseling you will help. The Bible says in the multitude of counseling, there is safety. In fact, I don't want to stop. <laughs> you know, the like family meeting is so sweet, and the conversation, the discussion is so wonderful. You don't want to go, but it's already getting late. Oh my God. Well, thank you so much, sir. We're grateful that you're able to make it. Sister Tessie, we thank you so you're much welcome. for the great wisdom. May God bless you and continue to keep you. And may you grow in him to, to the extent he wants to take you. In Jesus' name. Thank you so Amen. much, sir. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thanks so, for having me. Thank you, sir. Okay, we're going to go to Brother Kwame. Um, Brother Kwame, our president. Um, Brother Kwame, if he has any announcement or anything to say to us. Is Brother Kwame on the line, please? If Brother Kwame is on the line, we'll take one question. Brother Kwame, is he there? Oh, 
Okay, so I just got, um, someone just said he's not, but I don't know, is there any other leader who wanted to say something? Um, who has announcements? Okay, so by the way, we're going to have this um, meeting on YouTube. So as I promised, since we promised, no, you will take one question, one question. So this person is asking, give me a moment, please. So can you please explain what God meant by run with patience, the race set before us, how we run with patience? That's the last question before we pray and close. Huh? Just can we unmute Pastor Benga? Media team, please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, very quickly, the Lord is telling us to run with perseverance. The Christian race is likened to a, uh, the Christian life is likened to a race. And uh, whenever you're running the Christian race, there are challenges that will come your way. The persecution, there'll be difficulties. And the reason is because the devil doesn't want you to keep going. He wants you to stop your journey halfway. He wants you to look back and turn back. Uh, and that's why the Lord is saying, um, run with perseverance, persevere, endure, endure the challenges. Uh, those challenges will drive you on your knees many times to pray and fast uh, for mountains to move. But those things are helping to build your spiritual muscles. And that's what the Lord is telling us, that the Christian race is, uh, we're fighting the good fight. When you think about the analogy of a fight, it's, it takes endurance, it takes perseverance, it takes patience to be able to win. And it's not, it's, uh, it's not, it's gonna take some time before we eventually uh, finish the race, uh, but we've got to keep moving, we've, we've got to keep going. We know we're on the victory side, whatever challenge comes our way, we persevere and with patience, we'll get to our destination. Thank you so much, sir. And this concludes the meeting of tonight. Um, sir, please, would you, you know, close the session for us and close the meeting? Sure. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you. We, we bless your name for how you have spoken to us tonight about the power of patience. We appreciate you for this great virtue that every believer should have and every believer should grow in. Lord, we ask that you will help us to major on patience, to learn patience, to grow in patience so that the power of patience can be seen in our lives as we mature, as we, as we grow in you, as uh, uh, we, we see more of your power, we see the miracles, and we see the many things that you want to bring in our lives and you'll help us to to keep the spiritual stature so that this Christian race that we have started will be able to uh, continue successfully and will be able to end finally uh, in glory in Jesus' name. We mm -hmm. redeemed us for the top. You have redeemed us to reign. We are born to win, but it takes patience to win. It takes patience to reign. We pray that you will multiply grace in our lives so that we can continue patiently, uh, whatever we're going through, whatever challenge is on our way, we continue patiently, we persevere until we reach the finishing line in Jesus' name. Lord, mm -hmm. finally, I pray for your people that uh, those who are going through difficult times, those who are trying to hear from you, I pray that you will, you will speak to their hearts. It will be crystal clear to them and they'll be able to go in the direction of your will in Jesus' name. With mm -hmm. Father, for the answer, Lord, this be your holy name. Take the young adults to greater heights. Let mm -hmm. this be the best year yet for everyone in Jesus' name. Let the mm -hmm. joy of people be multiplied. Those who are trusting you for the will of God in marriage, Lord, I pray that every spirit of delay be removed in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Pray there'll be clarity of direction and that there will be, you'll bring it to pass in their lives in Jesus' name. Those who are looking 
you for a new job, open doors for them. Whatever your people are looking up to you for, trusting you for, waiting on you for, Lord, I pray that in tangible ways you'll, you'll grant their desires, you meet them at their point of needs, you'll perfect all that concerns them, and you'll be glorified in their lives. We thank you, Father, for the answer. Bless mm -hmm. your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.